What up, everybody, man? It's your boy, JK, man, today is Thursday. See, so you already know what it is, man. It's Tackle Thursday. And today, I'm tackling, but not just myself, but we're tackling the idea, the topic, right, that right feels wrong, right? Right feels wrong. That's what we're tackling today, right? Right feels wrong wrong right and, and and we're human beings so 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 a lot of times we move off of emotions we 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 move off of feelings right and, and and sometimes we do things based off a lot of times we do things based off of how we feel right we're like man you know this feels right so i'm gonna do it or this don't feel right um so i'm not gonna do it right and so many times in life that's that's how we move we're moving off feelings right and, and so, man, I wanted to, to tackle the topic, the idea, man, uh, right feels wrong. Um, and, 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 you know, if you've been rocking with Tackle Thursday, and I appreciate you, uh, but if it's your first time, you know, watching uh, Tackle Thursday, I like to kind of give a backstory to, to how I come across the topic. So, so, man, I'm a huge fan of the podcast. I'm athlete, right? Brandon Marshall, Chad Johnson, Fred Taylor, Channing Crowd, all of them on there, right? And Fred Taylor, he says something, he says something, right? So profound, right? So he talks about how exposure leads to expansion, right? And he talks about, Fred Taylor talked about how, you know, when we are exposed to new things, then, then, then we expand, we learn, we grow, we develop into uh, uh, these, dip, you know, to better people, right? Be based off of what we're exposed to, right? And so from that, what I, what I took, you know what I'm saying? I started, you know, thinking, I'm thinking about a topic and everything. And I'm like, man, when right, you know, right feels wrong, right? Because when we really like think about it, a lot of times what we consider to be right or wrong is not really based off of what's right and wrong a lot of times. It's, it's based off of, you know what we've been exposed to or what we what how we grew up right so so if i grew up a certain way or if i grew up in a certain part of the you know what i'm saying the country i might have grown up doing certain things and based off of what i grew up doing i began to think okay this is right why because this is all i have done but then if I grow up in another part of the country or another part of the world that may do something totally different than how I do it, right? They may do something and say, you know what? No, this is how I grew up. So this is what's right. And so if I grew up, I grew up in Florida and somebody might have grew up in New York. And we look at, hey, man, how you wear your jeans? Oh, nah, bro, like, this is how I wear my jeans, bro, right? And so to me, I may look at somebody in New York and say, man, you rocking your jeans wrong. Why? Because how I was grew up and what I was exposed to and what I was taught, right? I was taught to wear my jeans like this. So this is what's right, right? And then, right, and so if I'm looking, so, but the person that's from New York is like, nah, bro, like, nah, how you wear your jeans is wrong. How I wear my jeans is right and so many times we go through life with this idea of what's right or what's wrong based off of what we've been ex exposed to and when our exposure is limited right then then our understanding is limited our perspective is limited so we can go around thinking that you know what man this is right and it might not even be right but it's right to you because this is the only thing you've been taught. This is the only thing you've been exposed to, right? I, I have my little cousins, man. My little cousins are so funny. They, they ain't little no more. Like, I think one like 16, 17, but you know, uh, still like half my age. Uh, but, but you know, my little cousins, they came up here. They're from Florida, so I'm from Florida too. So uh, they came up here one time and, and I had like some Sperry's on, right? Like, you know, the boat shoes, some Sperry's. So I'm rocking the Sperry's and they got J's on, you know what I'm saying? Suited and booted with a nice outfit, right? And, and they said, dang, they were like, dang, cuz you, lo you lost your swag. Like, cuz you, you tripping right now, like rocking them Spurries. Like, you ain't even got no Jordans on, right? And, and it was nothing wrong with what they were saying. But in my cousin's eyes, what I had on was wrong. Why? Because they were used to where they grew up 
All you rocking is J's. You got the whole fit match from the top to the shorts to the shoes. That's all you rock, right? So that's how they grew up. But that's how I grew up too. So I, I, when I grew up, when I was only exposed to that in Florida, I was like, oh yeah, I gotta rock the J's. I gotta rock this. My whole outfit gotta match. It gotta court. I gotta basically wear exactly what's on the mannequin. But then when I got to Tennessee and I got to college and I started seeing, you know what I'm saying, people rock the Sperry's and they had the, they could rock it with the jeans, they could rock it with the shorts, you know what I'm saying, I started to add that to my, you know what I'm saying, to my clothing repertoire and whatnot, right? And so I was exposed to something new, so I expanded, I grew as a person. So where I thought that growing up in Florida, I'm like, oh man, them boat shoes, that's wrong, right? When I got to Tennessee and I was exposed to something different, I realized like, man, that wasn't wrong. I just hadn't been exposed to that. And so the same thing for my cousin, they thinking that I'm wrong for rocking the shoes that I'm rocking, right? But they just wasn't exposed to it at that particular time, right? And so like I say, so if we're limited or how we grow up or what we're taught can have us believing what something is right when it's really wrong or something is wrong, uh, or thinking that something is wrong when it's really right or it could be indifferent, right? And so even like when we think about like what we eat, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I really, we, we grow up right like on fast food. And so like, well, I grew up, I ate fast food, but my mom, dad, they threw down, you know, cook for me too, right? So um, I'm very picky when it comes to, you know, eating certain foods, right? And so I didn't grow up eating sushi. I didn't grow up, you know, eating hunt. I didn't hunt either. Like moving up to Tennessee, they were like, man, bro, you don't hunt, you don't eat. I'm like, nah, bro, I go straight to the store. If I can't get it out the store, hey, it, it probably ain't getting eaten by me, right? And so the thing is, is I ate what I ate because that's what I grew up on. That's what I was taught. I ate the foods that I ate. Somebody that grew up in, in, in that, that hunted, they ate deer meat. They ate thing uh you know what i'm saying uh wildlife right and it was nothing wrong with that but that's just how they grew up right and so so many times that we can grow up thinking that okay the right way is how i was taught and if any other way if you have a if you eat different than i eat you're wrong and that's not the case it's just different right and so the thing that I feel like at the end of the day is where we find ourselves getting in trouble as human beings or we find ourselves frustrated as, as, as human beings is because we could get so accustomed to a way of life. We could get so accustomed to a way of thinking, to a way of living that, that if someone ever tried to come and show us a better way to do it, or, 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 or a healthier way to eat, or, or, or a better way to dress, or uh, a, a better way to do something, or a better way to think about something that's contrary to how you were raised, you would think that it was wrong, right? Because you're like, hold on now, nah, this ain't how I was raised. I wasn't raised on eating this, so that must not be healthy, or that must not be right. Or, or I, was, I wasn't raised, like my cousins, they looking at me like, nah, Jeremy, like, nah, where we from, we, we, we wasn't shown how to dress like how you dressing, so you got to be dressing wrong, right? And so that's, hence, that's where the title comes, right? Right feels wrong. Root to the good bros, what up, simp? Like, right feels wrong, right? Because... We think a lot of times how we're raised that, or, or we, get, we could get accustomed to doing something so much that we'll start believing that, you know what, how I think is right. What makes it right? Oh, because this might have been the way you thought since you was a kid. Or you may think the way you eat is right. Why? Because that's how you was raised. You, it wasn't challenged. Or how you look at relationships, how you look at life, you thinking that, oh, that, nah, this, I'm, I'm right. Why? Why are you right? Why? Why? Who says that you're right? Is it because solely you're accustomed to thinking that? You've seen that? That's how you grew up? That's, those are the type of relationships you've seen. So if you've seen that growing up, you don't have, you don't, you can't differentiate between right and wrong. You're just like, oh no, that's what I see in relationships. That's what I see X, Y, Z, right? And so because you've seen it from a little kid, that's all you know, so you think is right. And so the question is, what happens when someone tries to come along and educate you 
on maybe eating better, like I said, or or maybe dressing a little different, or you know what I'm saying, or 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 just how to look at how to relationships, friendships differently, right? We have a hard time, right? Doing if somebody could come and tell you the right thing to do, and you and we as humans have a hard time doing something that's right because it feels wrong, right? Like, 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 I'm just keeping a buck, right? So, so I coach football. Now, any of y'all that coach, nine times out of ten, you, you have went to a higher level than the people you're coaching, right? Especially if you're coaching like high school, seven on seven, whatever, right? So you probably didn't play it in college. You might have played pro, whatever the case. So you're trying to, the, your, your players are trying to get to where you've already been and surpassed, right? So, so I, I can remember telling my, my, one of my DBs, I'm like, bro, like, you gotta, you, you, I'm like, in your back pedal, you gotta be low, you gotta stay square. He's like, nah, coach, you don't know what you're talking about, right? I'm like, nah, try it this way, this one on one, this one we work. So he tried my technique, he got beat. He come back, nah, coach, I ain't doing that, that's wrong. Is it wrong or does it just feel wrong? You know what I'm saying? See, he had been practicing bad technique for so long that bad technique becomes normal. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 Bad technique becomes normal. Like if you're in a toxic situation for so long, the toxic situation becomes normal. And when somebody tries to present present something healthy to you, a healthy situation, you're like, nah, something wrong with that. No, there's nothing wrong with that. That's right. It just feels wrong. Right? So while I'm trying to coach the DB, I'm like, yo, like, you gotta stay low. You gotta keep your eyes on your man. You know, I know it feels uncomfortable. I know it feels wrong, but it's right. But in his mind, he's like, nah, I'm about to go back to what feels right. And so that's what a lot of times we, we get in trouble in life, just as people in general, because we're looking for this feeling, right? We're looking for, for what feels right. And all it does is everything that feels right is not always right. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, like this DB, he's been practicing this bad habit his whole life. Even like I coach softball, right? And so I'm trying to get the girls, I'm like, look, Hey, you know, when you hit, you got to make sure you step, step that first foot, uh, eyes down, don't be looking away. So they trying it and they're missing the ball. Are they missing the ball because I'm teaching them wrong? No, they missing the ball at this point in time. Why? Because it's uncomfortable. It doesn't feel right. I'm teaching them what's right, but right feels wrong. So guess what? When right feels wrong, what they want to do? Rebel and go back to the old ways, right? Or, or even like when we thinking about a business. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, we may be, you know, we might have a business or whatever the case may be. Um, even like as I watch these podcasts and different things and I'm, I'm learning, I'm growing, um, I can feel like, oh man, you know, as, as people, we like, man, I made it to new heights or I made it to a certain height in my business or I've been doing this for 10 years in my business and then somebody comes to you and says, you know what, you've been doing good, but I, but I can, what if you change this technique? What if you change this strategy? Right. And, 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 and some, some company could be like, man, I've been in the 10 years. I'm doing good. I'm straight, bro. Right. And so they, they're afraid to try something new, right. To try something better because trying something different than you already, all that you always have done doesn't feel comfortable because as human beings, we like to feel comfortable. We like to feel good. But many times, a lot of times to go to another level, we got to go through some discomfort. So if you're trying to grow as a business, if you're trying to grow as a person, you might have to challenge yourself and put yourself in or do something different that may not feel good, but may be what's right for you. Maybe what's right, right for, 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 for your company, right? We could think about relationships. We think about relationships. So, um, yes, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm blessed to be married, right? Me and my wife going on um, six years of marriage. And, um, but even, you know, you think about those that may be single, right? There are people that, that you know, choose to be single. But then there are people that, that want to be in relationships. One of, uh, one of the, uh, fa me and my wife's favorite shows is Married at First Sight, right? And so, the thing about it, a lot of times, right, people are trying to figure out, hey, why am, how am I still single? Why am I single? Why am I, si why am I single? Why I can't find nobody, right? And a lot of times, it's because as people, it's not that God hasn't brought a good person along for you to date or be with, right? But a lot of times, 
people have their own idea of who and what they want to be with, who and what they want to date, right? So, so if or, or they have their idea of what a good dude look like. So, ladies might have their idea of what a good man is. Dudes may have their idea of what a good woman is, right? And many times, based off what we see growing up, how we see our parents or our guardians or the men and women in our lives, how we see them in how we see them interact with each other teaches us or shows us right or wrong what an example of a you know that we want in a woman right or that we want in a man man so our idea your idea of a ladies your idea of a man may be wrong fellas your idea of a woman may be wrong but that's the only idea that you have so you might go into every situation every relationship with that idea but that idea may be wrong, so you keep trying to figure out, man, why are these relationships not working? Why I can't? Maybe you have to change your idea the way that you see her. Or ladies, maybe you got to change the way that you see him, right? So, so, so a lot of times, even like watching the show Married at First Sight, a lot of the people that's on there, they get scared. Like they start, you know, once they get together, they start dating. And a lot of them get scared by the person they be matched with because they're like, oh, nah, like, I'm used to, you know, ladies be like, I'm used to a guy being like this and the fellas be like, I'm used to a, 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 a the woman doing that. And that's the thing. That's what's wrong. It's because what we're accustomed to, we automatically believe it, that's what's right. And that's not true. And the people match them up, not with what the person thinks is right, but what, what that person needs. So, so... The people, you know, you may be looking at somebody you trying to date and like, I didn't hear a girl say this before. He too nice. What if nice is what you need? But nice feels different to you. So you automatically think that ain't the right guy for me. He too nice. Why? Because your idea is that you want or need a mean guy or whatever it is. And if a guy comes along and he's nice, and it's different. It feels different. It don't feel like all the other guys you dated. So this guy is nice. And because it feels different, you automatically think, oh, it's wrong. Or same thing with us, fellas. You get what I'm saying? You meet a girl and she like, look, man, I'm waiting. Like, I ain't trying to give it up. Like, and you like, hold on. Like, nah, bro. Like, hold on. All the other girls I be talking to, they be, they be down with it. Like, after a week. And this girl is like, nah, I'm trying to wait till I'm married. And in your mind, you like, this ain't the girl for me. Is it not the girl for you or is it just different? In your head, you like, no, because it's di it, this just feel different. I ain't never had no girl tell me she want to wait. So this feels different, so I think it's wrong. And I'm here to tell you that wrong, right? Something that is right for you can feel wrong because it goes against everything that you thought of or every every belief that you had and so many times i truly believe like people miss out on good people on dating or marrying or or being with good people because we have our own preconceived notions we have our own ideas of you know fellas got their own idea of of what they want that girl to have ladies have their own idea of what, what they want that man to have and it's cool like we you know you might have a type or you might have uh whatever the case may be your interests or, or whatever your ideals but you also, you know what I'm saying, which leads me to the third, like, the third point is, like, us as people, like, the only way we get over that frustration, right, we run into, like, dang, why does right feel wrong? Or, or why do I keep, like, bumping my head on things, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying it my way because I think my way is right, but, but, but that might be the only way you know. And so what we have to do, we got to open our minds. We got to, we got to be open-minded to hearing something different. And I think like as as like I said, like growing up in Florida, like my little cousins, they grew up, they was exposed to, you know, a certain way you're supposed to dress. And many times as people, how we're raised, how we're taught, what we're taught, we believe that that's the only way to do something. You know what I'm saying? Like how my like like how my dad taught me how to change a tire or how my dad like my dad taught me how to tie a tie around my leg. That's how my dad taught me. Right. But as I got older, I realized that there is more than one way to tie a tie. My dad, the way my dad taught me, it's right. But then I was also shown that, hey, 
there's another way to tie a tie, right? And so we got to understand that, yes, we, we might have our own way of doing things. We might have our own way of, 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 of you know, handling business, our own way of, you know, of doing, you know, learning, our own way of coaching. We might have our own way. However, we got to understand that there's just not one way to get it done. And we got to be open-minded to, to hearing, right, advice from other people. We got to be open-minded and being willing to say, you know what, like, dang, like, I was raised this way and I always thought that this was this, but now as I open myself and make myself more vulnerable to hear advice from you or you, I realize that, hey, it's different, right? Or, or just like, as a man, like we grow up and like my dad didn't do this, you know what I'm saying? My, my dad showed me masculine affection. So I, 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 I seen, you know what I'm saying, what masculine affection is, right? But also, you know, just being a man in the world, like growing up, like you hear, hey, real men don't cry, real men don't cry, right? And so you can grow up thinking like, nah, real, like men don't cry, like I'm tough, I don't share my emotions. And there are so many men that still have that belief. And so when you try to tell them like, look, it's okay to cry, right? They can feel that, that if they were to cry, they can feel that they're doing something wrong, why? Because it goes against what they've always been taught, right? And so that's where it goes to the title, when right feels wrong. Like crying as a man, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with that, right? That like it's it's right, you know what I'm saying? To cry, to show your emotions, you know what I'm saying? I say this, like real men cry, real men don't whine. That's a difference, right? But but even as a man, you uh, as a man, you can feel wrong, like yo, like why am I crying? Why why I'm having these emotions? Like something wrong with me, right? But we can we can feel that something is wrong with us because it goes against what we've always been taught. It goes, it goes against what we've always been taught, right? And so, at the end of the day, um, basically, man, like I say, with with the topic, right? When right, you know, right feels wrong. We, we got to understand that right doesn't always feel right. Um, that's even making something we have to make tough decisions. I remember like watching I Am Athlete podcast and I forgot the young lady name, um, but dope lady. Um, uh, she helps run I Am Athlete and she was trying to decide. She was leaving her. She's a lawyer. She worked in the NFL. She worked for the Panthers and she was, you know, trying to decide between Apple, um, working for the NFL or I Am Athlete. Right. And and she said that one of her mentors said, which one scares you or, or, or basically like which one makes you feel um, the most uneasy. Right. And she said, choose an I am athlete. And guess what she chose? I am athlete. Right. And guess what? It has worked out. That was the right decision for her. And so if she just would have went off of how she felt, if she was looking for uh, the good feeling. She would have never chose the right decision, right? So we got to understand that that right doesn't always feel right. Don't, making the right decision is not always tied to all these butterfly feelings or all these, you know, you don't always get applauses for making the right decision or choosing the right thing, right? So so that is what I think, like, we, we truly got to understand. And also, like, just because you have done something for so long it, it could be the wrong thing but because you did it for so long it can be right it it can feel right you know what i'm saying but that's not always the case like i just share this too before i get into tell them kill them said me man like um so like financial literacy like i'm really like seeking um, you know what I'm saying? Just growing financially, like learning more and more and different things. And it's so crazy because, you know, we talk about like in the black community, like that's not something, even in school, they don't teach that a lot, right? Nowadays you see it more, but growing up, we didn't hear about financial literacy and, and it wasn't, I wasn't exposed to it. So there are things that I hear within like financial literacy, when I'm watching Earn Your Leisure, Social Proof Podcast, all that, there are things that I'm learning that, that, that doesn't even sound like it's the truth. It sounds so wrong. I'm like, hold on, like, you could do what with your business? You could buy what with your business? Okay, you could build your business credit and do what? I'm like, oh man, like, that don't even sound like, that don't even sound like you, that's right to do. And the reason why it doesn't sound right is because I wasn't exposed to that. And the reason why it wasn't sound right 
doesn't sound right because I grew up with a different mindset, a different mentality. So I grew up thinking this about money and about finances. So, so, so because I, I thought this way so long, I thought that my idea of money and what I perceive money to be, right, and financial literacy to be, I thought that I was right. And so when I actually hear, I'm hearing what's right now, like, like now as I'm listening to different things, I'm learning what's right and it doesn't even sound right. Why? Because it's going against everything I grew up learning, everything I grew up, you know, listening to, everything I grew up believing. But I have to step out of the box and say, you know what? Even though this feels wrong, even though this information goes against every single thing that I might have grew up listening to or being exposed to, this is actually right. Right? So I got to understand, you got to understand, we got to understand that, that there are times, there are many times where right can feel wrong. And so we got to make sure that even if it feels wrong, we can't let the feeling of wrong keep us from doing what is right. All right. So uh, definitely want to open it up uh, for, for, for some questions. Um, let me uh, switch over my picture right quick. Uh, they don't even want to let me uh, alone. All right. There we go. All right, so um, definitely want to open it up to uh, Tell Them, Kill Them segment. Um, and if you're new to uh, Taco Thursday uh, with JK, uh, so basically what this segment is, man, feel free to ask me any any question you want to ask me. It could be about what we're talking about right now, um, how we're tackling the topic, uh, you know, right feels wrong. Um, or it could be about any question. It could be about, you know, free agency, what's going on with free agency. It could be about um, just life in general. I um, mean, you could be like, man, how your week going? Or whatever the case may be. Uh, man, feel free to 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 uh, drop a question, comment. This is like my, my favorite segment, part of the uh, the, the the podcast, man, is, is being able to interact with y'all, man. So so feel free. Cuz, what up? Okay, I got one over here. Um, ooh, okay, my cousin, man. What up, Jock? Uh, my mama used to say, don't let your feelings dictate your decisions. Man, it's so true. It's it man, it's so true. It's so true. Uh appreciate that, cuz. Appreciate you getting on too. Um, yeah, man, I, I think that, you know, especially being a lifetime wellness teacher, I encourage everybody, man, to watch the Disney movie. Yes, I said Disney movie, um, Inside Out. Inside Out. I show it to all my kids. I'm talking about I teach high schools, so I even show them, right? Just the importance of emotions, right? And 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 so many times, man, growing up when we kids, right, what our kids like. Like, you know, I might be working with, you know, we working with my kid, he might, my son, he might say, man, I don't feel like doing work, right? And as a kid, you think that, yo, cause I, if I don't feel like I don't gotta do it, but as you become an adult, as you get older, you realize like, man, it really ain't about my feelings. Like, you know, I said this in a post one time, like, you know, feel what you feel, uh, but do what you know is right. Do what you know is true, right? So we, we we can't make decisions. That's why, like, you know, they talk about, you know, if you lose a big game and you're an upcoming free agent, you you lose the big game. Like, don't come, or you're a coach, don't come to the press conference and make a big decision because you're doing it emotionally. You know what I'm saying? That's an emotional decision, right? Whether you say, oh, I'm coming back or I'm leaving or whatever the case, it's emotional, right? So you can't, so it's, 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 it's even like, you know what I'm saying? Even when you're having a disagreement with your, with your spouse, or your significant other, right? Don't just walk out, oh, I'm gone. Like, are you saying you gone because you're mad or you really like feel like you gone? Cause you're just saying you gone just because emotionally you're upset at that moment, um, that's not healthy for the relationship, right? So we gotta know how to control. We can't just make decisions based on our emotions, right? But now we, we got feelings, like tap into your feelings, feel what you feel, but do what you know is right. Do what you know is true, all right? Um, so definitely cuz that's that's real though, man. Um, so Tweez, what up? You said what do you think about Janor Oh, that boy went to the top. Hey, Tweez, you stat man for real. Hey, you know what's crazy, man? Cuz um, man, I think that's a great pick. And the reason why I think it's a great pick, because um, and I could be wrong. I like watching the Titans, I think that they run a lot of zone. You get what I'm saying? Uh, I'm pretty sure they throw man in there, but I would have to say we probably, you know, and I, when I say we, like, I'm, I'm living in Tennessee, I want to raise my son 
to, to, to be, a, be a Titan fan. So, you know, I'm trying to rock with the Titans. You feel me? Uh, and that boy KB, Kevin Byron, that bat holding it down, that safety. Uh, but I feel like they run a lot of zone. You know what I'm saying? And so, I think to, unless... How you see in the Bucks? Unless you 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 hunting at that D line, and then you got linebackers like Levante David that can that can cover tight ends like that, it's hard to win a Super Bowl running zone, or it's hard to win against great quarterbacks, right? And I don't think the Titans got that pressure, had that that front four to be able to, or the front three high, you know, they're running three four, whatever the case may be. I don't think they got that pressure. Now what 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 happens is now you got a Janoris Jenkins that can lock up. You get what I'm saying? Um, I want to say we got a, they got a corner last year in the draft, um, but they lot, I, they let a lot of DBs go, and I, it, it blew my mind, like Kenny Baccaro, which I thought him and KB had a good, was a good pair, um, I understand, Macabal, I thought he played good, but I understand, man, money, he was getting paid a lot of money, um, so that probably was gonna hurt against the cap, and then, uh, oh, oh, boy from USC, um, they let him go too, so I, that, I think that's a definitely a good pickup. And, and Janora Jenkins, you know, he's he from the crib, so um, you know he gonna ball. And I think that that gives him an option. Like he may not be your top man to man corner in the league, but I think he's somebody go like, hey, look, you go follow that number one, you go follow that number one, and he got ball skills. So not only can he cover, but if the ball coming his way, he could pick it out too. So I think that's a great pick, dog. Great pick, great pick. Um, uh, let me see. Let me see. Uh, okay, I got a, someone on Facebook. He say, uh, veteran leadership, been through the trials, great zone player scheme. Nah, definitely. Like, I, I, I think, and to your point, um, cuz too, like, so if they do run that zone, yes, he got great instincts. So, you know, I think Janora has to be able to read the quarterback. So, when you got an instinctual player, that's what I loved about zone. I was like, oh, you telling me I just got curl flat? You know what I'm saying? I got hot too. That's all I got. Oh, I get to look at the quarterback. Oh, it's over. Right? I'm reading the quarterback's shoulder. So, um, I think that'll be great for Janoris when they do go zone, that he get eyes on the quarterback. Um, man, that thanks. Speaking of that, like Santi Samuel, man, that boy need to be in the Hall of Fame. They tripping on Santi Samuel. Like, I don't care if a son, if Zunt was uh zone or man, like the man, what he did in his career, like he's a Hall of Fame. So shout out to Zunt, man. Um, uh, repping the crib too. Uh, Santi Samuel definitely need to be in the Hall of Fame, man. Uh, they be sleeping on him, man. Um, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. He had a good year with the, with the, with the Saints. Pretty much everywhere he been, he balled. Um, uh, Janoris, like even when he was with the Giants, like he balled. Uh, Saints, I feel like he played for somebody else, though. Uh, was it the Rams? He played for the Rams? Is that who, who drafted him? But everywhere he went, though, he put up numbers. So, um... So it's 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 a lot of corners though, a lot of DBs uh uh moving like Pat P just went to the Vikings, so that's gonna that's gonna be interesting. All right, all right, yeah, yeah, okay, play for the Giants. Like that boy, um, yeah, cause he's definitely a Hall of Fame. Like Pat P, Pat P just went to the Vikings. Uh so Janoris went to the Saints. Um, you know, it's crazy when I start seeing people like my age and they start like getting to ladder in their careers. It starts showing me like, yo, boy, you you know what I'm saying? You getting older, bro. So uh uh, you know, but uh but definitely I'm interested in seeing what 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 the Vikings gonna do, you know what I'm saying, with Pat P out there. Um so I, I think it's gonna be a lot of movement, man. A lot of movement. But I but overall to answer that question, definitely I think that's a great pickup. Great pickup for the Titans, man, to get Janoris Jenkins at uh for the corner. At corner, man. Um, so I wonder who they're gonna have at safety. They're probably gonna have somebody else with uh, KB um, out there. But um, so it, it it'll be interesting though. Interesting. Let me go ahead. I got another one. Um, okay, what podcast do I listen to, man? Um, what I listen to, what I listen to. I'm gonna get to that too. Cause I talk about who the best DB in the league. Um, when I listen to, I listen to. So I listen to I Am Athlete. Um, you know, that, that's probably, I gotta say, that's probably my favorite podcast right now. Uh, I am athlete for, for a few reasons. One, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think they keep it so real. Um, and I, I don't think, you know, and I think this is different times. So you never really seen this type of platform, but I think they, they keep it, keep it 100. Then not only that, like they had the crib, like, you know, I think they're in like, I mean, not for a lot of them, but they're like living like in West End stuff, like so you know, still Broward County or whatever the case may be. So like, and then like, who they? Who, the only one I think that's not from Florida was well, two people not from Florida, like Channing and um, uh, Brandon Marshall. But 
hearing Chad Ocho talk, hearing Fred talk, I feel like I'm back at a crib. Like, the lingo they use, they mannerisms, they mentality, it's like, yeah, like, that's how we grew up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or that's, that's the, our mentality or, or whatnot. So, man, and then I learned so much about them, like, just the things that they talk about, what they talk about money, uh, what they talking about just, like, as men going to get health checkups, uh, whether they talk about, you know, even, like, you know, I get marital advice off of that, too, like, when they bring the women. Like, I watch I Am Woman, too. And, like, you know, if, I don't know if y'all follow my wife, go follow her, Brittany K. Moments. Um... She she talked did a post today like that's one of our little date night things like we just be chilling on the couch and that put on I am athlete that put on I am woman right because like how we look at it is like anything we watch especially in 2021 like yes it's so much information so I'm reading you know reading books listening to audio audio books different things but just turning on YouTube and letting that thing just play through the house while you're doing there are so many nuggets that that you're you're putting in your mind like even subconsciously you're not even knowing it but but you're like, dang. And then my wife will be like, man, you remember like the other day they said this on the podcast. We're like, dang, you, you remember that? Oh, I didn't hear that part, right? But it's something that we could pour into our marriage or pour into us, like her, as she pointed to herself as a woman, I'm pointing to myself as a man. Or, or, or in, even like, so I listen to Social Proof. Um, David Shans uh, is, is, is his podcast, Social Proof. And so basically what he does is he interview people who... Um, who have the proof that their business works. So he interviewing different people, but um, me and my wife, we watch that too. Like, you know, sometimes watch it uh, together, might have it on, you know, individually, but it's nuggets on there, like teaching you how to plan your day, different certain businesses and, and, and what you can do with your business, what you can buy with your business. So I would say the top two right now, I am athlete and social proof. Um, and then we, we bit fans of, I don't know if you watch this, but uh, like Kev on stage, Miss Kev, Kev on stage, we watch a lot of stuff that they content they put off, put on too, man. And then, you know, I'm pretty sure everybody heard of uh, Earn Your Leisure. Um, I think they're like the number one podcast right now uh, in the world. So um, those different ones. So, you know, we, we got podcasts we listen to um, where it's, it's for marital advice and some just for laughter. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like life is so serious that sometimes you just want to chill and laugh. But then we got some like I Am Athlete. It's, 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 it got humor in it, but it's educational and it's just real. And then social proof is the same thing. It's educational, but also real too. So those are my three that I listen to, man. Um uh, type in some of your podcasts that you listen to, man, so I can, you know, I can check that out too. Uh, so let me see. So Christian Fulton from Christian Fulton. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, you might be a real Titans fan. Yes, Christian Fulton. Yeah, they, we uh, the Titans drafted him, so that's the other corner. So him, Janoris Jenkins at the other corner. So um, that uh, that that's gonna probably be interesting to see 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 what happens. Um, with that man, um, but uh, but yeah, that's definitely the other corner. Uh, so let me see. Okay, so I got so my cousin said Xavier Howard. So this right now, Tweez Alley right now, uh, Xavier Howard best DB in the league right now. That's what he said. I man, numbers don't lie. So uh, a lot of times, you know, being a DB, you know what I'm saying. Um, I know that quarterbacks literally could throw away from you. You know what I'm kind of saying? So I understand that, right? So, like, even when Revis was in the league, like, his numbers might not be crazy. But what he did, like, he got paid for the plays he didn't have to make, right? So, but then you look at, like, somebody like Xavier Howard, who Xavier Howard locking them up, and he got the numbers. Like, crazy. So he locking up. Then when they throw it at him, he ain't just getting PBU'd. Like he picking that thing off. So, man, I I I would say, man, if we say numbers wise, we we could say here yeah, like a tweet. X man, I see it up. It's like numbers wise, you might go as Xavier, right? But if I gotta say like talent wise, I probably have to go with uh, Jalen Ramsey. I probably have to like talent wise. You know what I'm saying? Like, the dude is, what, 6'2"-ish? You know what I'm saying? So he's 6'2". Uh, he's fast, 4'3 fast. And then he is strong. So, like, like let's think about, like, okay, DK Metcalf. He played DK Metcalf. DK big. But he can't bully Jalen because Jalen is 
you know what I'm saying, 6'1", 6'2", 200 and some pounds. You know what I'm saying? So he can't bully him. Then uh, DK can't run by him because Jalen run 4 3 2, right? Then let's go down to the quicker receivers, right? When Jalen played uh, Antonio Brown. You know what I'm saying? So you put a quick receiver on him, like Jalen's quick and fast too. So it's like, okay, it's really not a nightmarish matchup for him. So I gotta say, like, probably Jalen, when you just say, like, man, like who the most like complete package. He can run, he big, he fast. And then you try to go jump ball, who jumping over him? You know what I'm saying? Like so it's, it, it ain't too many weaknesses that Jalen got, um, if he got any. And then, you know what I'm saying, like I say about Xavier Howard, if you want to go to Xavier Howard, you can go to the numbers. Like, the man had, what, 10 picks? He led the lead? I don't even know who won. Like, I hate how they do DBs, bro, like in, um, in the NFL. I like, like, arena, arena, man, like, arena, they respect, like, they, they give defensive back of the year and they give defensive player of the year. Like, a lot of times, you know what I'm saying, the, the person with the most sacks, is going to get the defensive player of the year. But, like, Xavier Howard had 10 picks. He should have been the defensive back of the year. At least get DB of the year, right? But, uh, but yeah, I got to say them two, though. Xavier Howard, Jalen Ramsey, um, no particular order. It depends on what you're looking for. If you say most talented, all around, gifted, you got to go Jalen. You know what I'm saying? He get picks, too. If you, if you, if, and he that boy physical, too, though. He come up hitting, though. I ain't really see a Xavier Howard hit like that yet. But Jalen, like, all around. Like, literally, you could put him in a slot. You could, he blitz. You could put him at corner. And then you could put him at safety. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's where he started at, you know, rocking, playing safety at FSU. But them two right there, they go hand in hand, I think, right? So, I, I know some of y'all on here comment. Y'all got, uh, so my cousin said, he said, Howard's own man, nickel. Safety cornerback, he could play it all. Okay, like, yeah, how can you know? But see, see, y'all got more like Twan. You know, I know you up in Tennessee, but you you stay heavy on the Dolphins, and then cuz you down there in Florida, so you get to actually watch their games. You get what I'm saying? So, so you probably see him move around. See, I don't really be seeing him. I just I'm a highlight watcher when it comes to Xavier, you know, Howard. You know, and then like with Jalen, like getting the opportunity to train with him, seeing him, you know. Face up, like, yo, like, buddy, nice. And then actually, like, seeing his games, they play more on national TV a lot of times. You get what I'm saying? I'm able to see, like, yo, he move around, he do this, da da da. So, uh, but definitely, though, that's a good point, though, cuz I see y'all on here on Instagram making good points, too. So, so, okay, uh, Tweez, you know what I'm saying? So, you definitely got the X Men and Jalen, you know what I'm saying? I think it's, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. And then, uh, Okay, uh, okay, you say it's Jalen Ramsey, no question, straight clamps. Hey, I feel you though. Hey, he do be locking down, you know. So, like I say, it's like, ugh, I don't think you go wrong with either one. I don't think you go wrong with either one, um, you know. So, uh, definitely, uh, let me see. So, I'm looking at you say, uh, you say you listen to uh, listen to special teams kicking pod. Whoa, they got special teams kicking podcast. Hey, but that's that lets me know you're serious about your crowd, though. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's one thing to say, look, I'm gonna be a collegiate kicker, which you are, right? Going to TSU next year, but you're even trying to take your your crowd to a whole nother level. You know what I'm kind of saying? And 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 that's big, man. That's that's definitely big and important. So shout out to you. So uh, so it's called Iceman Kicking, fourth down experience, fourth down focus. Hey, that's real though, man. That's real. Hey, shout out to you on that. Hey, speaking of Iceman, did you, I know you seen how TSU won a game this weekend. Uh, dude, yeah, dude hit that, what, like 60, 66 yard or 62 yard or something like that. Then he came and hit the game winner. And my home, and my uh, coach son, you know, Adam Ice Vane snapping that ball. So, uh, yeah, man, but that's definitely, man, I never knew of those podcasts. But what that shows me is that you're a student of, your, of the game. You're a student of, of, of what it is you want to get better at. And I feel like like in 2021, like we have no excuse on, on um, if we say we want to learn something, we got no excuse saying like, man, I want to learn this, but I, I, I don't know where to go. Man, it's so much information out there, free information out there that that if we just are diligent about it, we'll find it. And, I, and that's how I'm looking at like with fi like financial literacy. Like, I ain't gonna lie, it, it's a challenge for me to sit down. Like I can listen to I Am Athlete all day, but to sit down and listen to a financial literacy like podcast, like even though I'm like, yo, I wanna learn it. It's not like I didn't grow up on that. Like I didn't grow up 
with a liking or an interest. So I have to force myself, but I know that if I want to grow in it, right, I got to literally go in and sit down and watch. And so the fact that you saying, you know, what, I'm going to be a student of this. Um, um, kudos to you, man. Um, uh, big up to you, dog. Uh, uh, okay. Cause I'm gonna get to that little debate though, that you got going though, man. Um, Okay, so before I get to that question, so cuz his point is he said Jayla has given up more big play situations uh than X-Men. So now that is a statistical uh thing. You know what I'm saying? Like so we would have to get numbers though, cuz to 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 be able to to prove that. You get what I'm saying? Like we would we would have to get numbers. Um and how hey how how many years he been in the lead, uh Jock uh, Twan? I don't know how many years, uh, cause I feel like I just started hearing about Xavier Howard like the last like two years, but like, has he been doing this like, uh, you know what I'm saying? The His thing home. I can say about Jalen is that Jalen literally has played like he was with the Jaguars. And he took the, he, him being, I'm, it wasn't all him, but his presence being on the Jaguars took, it to, took them to like the number one defense in the league, right? Um, took him all the way to the AFC Championship. Then he went to the Rams. You know what I'm saying? Now the Rams. And we know about, you know what I'm saying, that, that beast on the front. You know what I'm saying? We already know about that, the D-line. But now he on the Rams and they one of the top defenses. You know what I'm saying? So, like, not only is he handling his business, but, like, he changing the atmosphere. So we will have to pull up the stats on that too, though, cuz. But um, I feel you, though. I feel you on that. Um, so to answer this question says, how do you brainstorm what topics to talk about? Man, to be honest with you, um, it's just different ways, man. Just really, uh, you know, um, I don't want to, you know, so one of the ways, the biggest ways is, 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 is really through prayer. Like, um, just praying, like God speak to me, give me a message, give me a word. Um, and that may, you know what I'm saying? I might sit down and be actually brainstorming or, uh, you know what I'm saying? I might be reading the Bible, um, uh, and as I'm reading, you know, it might be a message that, that comes up or, you know, a topic. And I'm like, man, you know what? This might be dope for, for Taco Thursday. You get what I'm saying? Might be dope for Taco Thursday. Uh, or also like, I think about like what's going on in the world too. You get what I'm kind of saying to a certain extent. Um, so like a couple weeks ago, I did the one about, um, uh, I did the one about Black History Month, right? Um, you know, beginning of the school year, I did one about education. Uh, so I, I, I definitely try to, um, I definitely try to stay, um, you know, relevant, you know what I'm saying? With what I'm talking about. Um, but definitely just coming from the, coming from the heart on, on whatever message that I'm, that I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying? But, but also I try to think about like who, who listen, who, who, who's listening, you get what I'm kind of saying? And so, uh, I try to, you know, I, so those are different ways. So prayer, reading the Bible, um, from like my life experience, like anything, like any topic that I come, I'm going to pull from probably my life experience because I don't, I don't really like to talk about something that I don't really have no life experience or this is what I do. I bring a guest on. So like, you know, I'm not a college coach. So how am I going to talk about college recruiting? Right? Yeah. I went through the experience, but my homeboy Gilstrap is a college coach. So why not bring him on? Right? You know what I'm saying? Or even when we did like breastfeeding, um, you know what I'm saying? I'm not a mother, I don't breastfeed, but I know I have women that, that watch the show as well. So it's like that maybe breastfeeding or, or men, Right? Your significant others, your wives may be going through, you know, y'all pregnant, thinking about breastfeeding. I can't sit up here and just talk to you about it. Why? Okay, my wife, come on. Right? So, um, that's that's kind of how I come up with the topics, man. And then, you know what I'm saying? I have put it out. Uh, I have put it out, too, um, to where I say, man, what y'all want to hear? Like, which I might do that, you know, soon, probably. You know, just like, hey, what's the topic y'all want want me to talk or talk about, right? Um, so you know, that's how I kind of flow flow with it, man, and uh, you know, and and go with it from there, man. So so definitely, man, great question too, great question. Um, let me see, let me see. Uh, yeah, that game that game was crazy. I see Miss Green talking about, hey, what's up, Miss Green? Um, okay, y'all boys out here, y'all boys out here getting the stats. What up, work? Um, y'all out here getting the stats. So, so, um, Jock said, my cousin said, so, 
X Man was five years. He been in the league, so they been in the league the same amount of time. So it say X Man had five years, twenty two picks. Jalen had five years, eleven picks. Um, but you know what I'm saying. So I like I say, if you we knew like numbers wise, uh, but he just had he just had a ten pick year too though. So we gotta think about that. So if I subtract. So he had four years, 12 picks, right? So I don't know. I get. I mean, like I said, it's, it's just really what are you looking for? Like, you know what I'm saying? If we say numbers is the best, like if we say numbers, like some people say, some people say Jordan the best, right? He got more rings than LeBron, but with Chamberlain, not with Chamberlain, but uh, Bill Russell got more rings than Jordan, but is Bill Russell better? All right, so when you want to, you know, when we want to use numbers, we can use numbers. But then we want to just look at the tape or we want to look at, you know, other things. Then, you know, but like I say, man, you can't go wrong with them as your top two DBs in the league. You you, you can't go wrong. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, hey, but I appreciate y'all. Well, I feel like y'all Adam Shafter, like, y'all coming up. Hey, you know what? Hey, nine, five years, 22 picks, five years, 11 picks. Hey, but I, hey, but this is, like, this is my favorite part of the show, man. I love this because this is, like, that real-time engagement. And the fact that y'all, like, no, nah, like, nah, y'all giving me facts and putting in the facts and it's just to me it makes the show that much better man that's why i love doing it live man and um i don't take this for granted man this is like one of the you know best parts of my week is being able to get on here engage with y'all man um being able to tackle different topics um share informa information me i'm learning from y'all things that y'all putting in y'all i pray and believe y'all learning from from me and then we all are able to leave and go be better as human beings um you know after the show is over, you know what I'm saying, until next week, all right, uh, let me also, man, uh, anybody else got any other questions, man, these, these have been some good questions, let me make sure I ain't missed no questions, though, uh, I see, uh, Tweet, you say he put, came in 2016, so they came in same time, um, definitely, who, oh, who I think is the most underrated DB in the league? I guess it's somebody I watch and I'll be like, hey, buddy, nice. Uh, who the most underrated DB in the league? Who is the most underrated DB in the league? All right, so I got to, okay. Um, this, this is me, you know what I'm kind of saying? Like, I'm going to be a little biased, but I'm going to be a homer too, though. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think I'm lying either, uh, you know. Uh, but I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta rock with Kevin Byard. I would probably say he is one of the most underrated um, DBs in the league, right? And I say that because, you know, if you like looked at his numbers, you know, consistency as far as like ball hawking, like picks that he was getting, um, even like when I when I watch him post some of it like in the box, his his statistics against the run, like. It just to me it gets washed so so like so much like so many times it just get glanced over. But and then like he didn't even make the top 100. Like you can't tell me it's a hundred players in the NFL better than Kevin Byer. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm not just being biased because we rocked the, had the same number. I'm not just being biased because we went to the same college. Um, but I'm 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 keeping it like 100. Like the man be balling and he got numbers and he got paid. You don't get paid. And 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 they don't just pay you, you know what I'm saying? Especially at the safety position, they don't just pay you to pay you. Like at one point, he was the highest paid safety in the NFL. Most people don't know that, you know what I'm saying? But he was. So I think like he one of the most underrated, you know, DBs in the league. I got Mark Lattimore right here from the Saints. Uh, Lattimore be balling though. Lattimore be balling from the Saints. Like he definitely be balling. Uh, who else? Um, when I think about it, like who else was the most uh, underrated? Y'all can put some names out too, man. If y'all think somebody else was underrated, um, I think that I, I, yeah, that probably that probably the most underrated for me, man. Just being a safety and, and seeing what he be putting up and how he be making plays too. Um, I gotta say that's probably the most under one of the most underrated for for me. Um, I can't really think about. It, uh, Arnett from Oakland? I don't, I don't really know who Arnett is, uh, but but I trust you. I mean, that goes into the point though. Uh, so Arnett from Oakland, see, I, yeah, yeah, I gotta, I gotta see him more. I gotta see him. 
Jeremy Chin. Mmm, I gotta see. What team is that? What team Jeremy Chin play for? Yeah, so these are the good points now. I'm pretty sure they do be balling in the league. And uh, they just, that's why sometimes I don't like the Pro Bowl, how they do the Pro Bowl. Because uh, sometimes I, I think people get selected off a of name, notoriety. Um, and and not uh, what, what you did this year. Because I think like, it's about what you did this year, not what you did the past five years. You get what I'm kind of saying? So, um, but okay, so I got Arnett from Oakland. I have Jeremy Chin from Carolina. Okay, Carolina. Uh, who else? Uh, I said Kevin Byer. Um, somebody else might have somebody, you know, another underrated DB too, though. You get what I'm saying? So, all right, gotcha. All right, so that, that was a good question. Cause most underrated DB. All right, I rock with that. But definitely, man, so many players in the league, man, and it's hard to market. Cause you know we rock our helmets, we are our helmets, so they can't even see your fresh haircut during the game and stuff like that, man. But uh, but definitely though, man. Anybody got any other questions, uh, comments, man? If you just joining on or you just jumping in first time on Tackle Thursday Live, um, you know Tackle Thursday with JK live on Facebook, live on Instagram. Um, and we in the tell them kill them um, portion of the segment where you can ask me any question. Um, so we just, I just got done at answering the question: Who's the most underrated defensive back in the league? We didn't talk about uh, you know why you know how do I go about choosing these topics? We talked about you know who's the best DB in the league? Is it, is it Jalen Ramsey or Xavier Howard? Um, you know what I'm saying? But what we tackled today is uh, what we're tackling is the idea um, that uh, right feels wrong, right? How you know, sometimes in life, like, we could get accustomed to doing something a certain way that because we're so used to it, we believe that that's right, right? Um, and then if somebody comes and tries to educate you or tries to show you a different way, it feels different, right? And it feels wrong. And because it feels wrong, you think it's wrong. But just because it feels wrong doesn't mean it's wrong, right? It can actually be right, you know what I mean? So, uh, so I said, did I see the... QB from Knoxville Catholic commit to Miami. You talking is uh Knoxville Catholic. That's um that's uh who won a national champ? T that's T Martin son. Is that is that T Martin son? T because I remember T Martin son go to Knoxville Catholic and he played quarterback. That is that T Martin that son that committed to Florida. I don't know, huh? I mean not Florida but Miami. Oh, Caden Martin. All right, yeah, yeah. So I know I didn't see that. Yeah, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. But I, I did see them when they played against uh, when they played against Deion Sanders, two way player, QB and baseball. All right, that's what's up. I I, I didn't know that. I, I should have known, Twan. I know you were gonna come through with that. Hey, good job though, following up on that stuff though. Hey, uh, so okay, so he going down to the UM. I seen the other quarterback that we had from last year, man. Um. They said his ACL uh, rehab is, is is he's ahead of schedule. So shout out to him. Um, it's just gonna be real interesting to see what college is gonna look like next year because you have so many players coming back, and I think it could be advantageous to like somebody like UM, you know, who when our team comes back, you know. But you look at like Alabama, Alabama losing their quarterback, Clemson lost their quarterback. So I, I feel like, especially in the ACC, maybe UM, you know what I'm saying? I think the running backs left for, for Carolina. I think they was from the crib too, um, from Florida. But uh, yeah, no, it's all about you. That's my favorite team, man. See, man, we got a lot in common, man. Um, but uh, but yeah, man, so I think I think the U, though, we might be in a good position, man. Shout out to Coach Diaz, man. And my dog, Mike Blunt, who the chaplain down there for, for uh, football and, and they sports. Um, so, but yeah, so so no, I, I didn't know that, man. But uh, but but that's a good, sound like a good pickup, though. Um, sound like a good pickup. So, uh, but uh, but definitely, though. Um, man, this is just a side note, man. Y'all go, y'all check out, uh, I've been watching some documentaries, too. Um, I'm, I'm, don't tell me. My last chance, you basketball. I'm on the last episode. Please don't ruin it for me. Uh, but that's a good show if y'all ain't seen Last Chance, you basketball. I like the coach, man. I respect them, though, man. Man of God and, and just even what he doing with the players. I like their team, too, man. I want all of them to win in life, too, man. Um, but also, man, check out that uh, 
the documentary that that LeBron and uh, Mav Carter did with 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 uh, Bronny and and Zier Wade and them, um, I think it's called First Class. Uh, if it if you got Amazon or something like that, uh, I think it's like IMDb uh, app or something like that. Check that out, man. It was two good documentaries though. I, I didn't watch over the last like week and a half, so just wanted to throw that out. You know, uh, you know, I feel like. Uh, I like to throw out what I'm watching too, man. So, uh, um, but definitely though, man. So if anybody, I'll probably open it up for like 30 more seconds, man. I'll allow somebody to ask another question. If y'all got another question. Um, hey, <laughs> hey, I haven't told you right too, man. Coach Diaz is hilarious, man. But one thing I can say about Coach Diaz, why I love playing for him is because like, I feel like he knew how to relate to the players. Like, he knew how to, like, like, he knew how to, like, even right now, I'm pretty sure with UM, like, those kids are way, like, he got kids, he's coaching kids that are younger than his oldest son, you know what I'm saying? So, but I, I feel like he has this, like, he's flexible as a coach, like, he knows how to relate from generation to generation, and I feel like when we was in school, like, he was a younger coach, but he knew how to relate with us. Like, some of his stories, you know, they might have been corny, but it was funny, right? His personality, um, how he talked, you know, was funny, man. And, and then he just knew the game, knew how to call the game. So, he, he made the game fun for us. Like, you know, not only, like, he allowed us to play fast. Like, you know, he didn't, like, overcomplicate it, but he allowed, he used what our skill set to, to his advantage. And that's why I think you've seen the success that we had on the field. Um, but definitely, uh, my favorite moment with Coach Diaz, I probably have to say, man, um, obviously winning the bowl game. Um, but I'd probably say, man, my, my 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 most special moment is like probably how I got to MTSU. Um, so I shared this. So Tuan, the dude, you know, the guy that keeps commenting on here, um, Coach Diaz was recruiting him. Right, um, and so he came to the game. Me and Twan, Twan, I ain't gonna give him the details to the game, Twan. Y'all just know we won, right? Just know that, right? But but anyway, so Coach Diaz was recruiting Twan. Um, he went to St. Thomas, one of the most one of the powerhouses, um, you know, in the country, you know, high school football. So he was recruiting recruiting Twan while he was there recruiting Twan and watching Twan ball. He ended up seeing me ball. So um, that's how I got on the radar with, with MT and uh, uh, Coach Diaz. But then after the season, he came to one of our All Star game practices. And make a long story short, he uh, yeah man, he he followed me he followed me home man. And when he followed me home. Um, I thought I lost him, and but back then that's when GPS started getting popular, and he put in his GPS, and uh, he beat me to my house. So I got out, I was crying. I was like, "Ma, I lost him." And they said, "No, I looked up, I looked across the street. He was over there." And he was like, he told my mom, he was like, "Hey," he told my mom and dad, he said, "Hey, y'all don't have anything to worry about with your son driving. He drives so slow, right?" So, so that was like, you know, one of the uh, I would say most memorable moments because. That's how I ended up getting the MT. You know, that's how I got on their radar. And, um, you know, I thought I had lost them. But, you know, being him, um, being smart, uh, smart and people, he was able to uh, GPS and get there. And, you know what I'm saying? The rest is history. So I would say probably that. And then being on the sideline of the FAU game for the Hail Mary. The Hail Mary. Um, I remember us looking at each other like, Coach, you know, he like looking at me like, Dang, like, we want this. It was the last play of the FAU game. It was on ESPN, too, I think. And we threw the Hail Mary. And uh, big play Bayard. Uh, he won my fantasy league this year. I'm coming for you, too, uh, Bayard, this year. But, uh, but yeah, he came down. True freshman came down. Boom. Caught the touchdown. And I remember just me and Coach uh, uh, Diaz on the sideline. Um, just, you know what I'm saying, we had a conversation before that play. And then we like, you know, went crazy. Um, so I just remember that that moment, man. So that's probably one of my favorite moments with him, though. Um, but yeah, man, definitely though, man. Uh, definitely great question, though. Great question. Great question. All right. So definitely, uh, man. I enjoyed this show. Like I enjoy all of them, man. Um, but the show, the shows are great because of you all. You all engaging, and I appreciate you. Y'all coming out every week, engaging, not just watching, but engaging participating man just uh i appreciate it I, I man i won't i won't forget this man so man thank y'all so i'll wrap it up man once again man it's another episode of tackle thursday with jk live on instagram live on facebook and y'all can catch this episode 
on YouTube. I'm going to upload it on YouTube. Go follow my page. Subscribe to my page on YouTube, right? If, you need, if you're trying to find me, hey, type in Jeremy Kellum. You can type in We and Pat now, right? Please subscribe to my page. Check out my other videos that I got on there, man. Um, check out some of my football highlights, man. Just show some love and support. Um, once again, man, today we tackled the idea. We tackled the notion. We tackled the topic, right? Right feels wrong. Understanding, right, that, that, that doing the right thing won't always feel right, right? And then also understanding that, hey, sometimes in life, we could get so accustomed to doing something that even if it's the wrong thing, because we do it for so long, we'll start believing that it's the right thing. And then, and then when someone tries to come along to educate us or to help us out, we'll be like, we, we would think that they're wrong. Why? Because it goes against what we're used to, right? And so, so, so just understand that we can get so stuck in our ways that even when we try to do the right thing, it can feel wrong. But that's okay if it feels wrong. You got to understand that, hey, right won't always feel right. And then sometimes wrong will feel right. So just understand what's really, really right and don't always go off of how you feel or what it feels like, all right? So, man, y'all, make sure y'all have a blessed rest of the night. Continue to wake up, striving to win on purpose. Be intentional about winning, and y'all have a blessed day, and I'll see y'all next Thursday. And if y'all got any topic that y'all want me to address or talk about, man, type it under one of my pictures, DM me, whatever the case may be, let me know what y'all want me to talk about, what y'all want me to tackle, all right? Feel free to do that, man. Um, I love doing that as well. So y'all have a blessed night. Appreciate y'all tuning in, too. Thank y'all.